week's clinical file, we have Garrett. And Garrett presents with a 10-year history of intermittent and achy left-sided jaw pain. The patient's pain is provoked when biting down on the right, but relieved when chewing on the left. Which of the following should be the primary focus of treatment? So we have A, modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and motor control training. B, joint mobilization, postural re-education, and motor control training. C, trigger point release, joint oscillations, and masseter stretching. And D is soft tissue mobilization, use of a night guard, and masseter stretching. So you can see that this is a fully loaded question. I mean, there's not a lot up in the question, but the answer choices are kind of what we call three-part answer. There's three different things, and we have to make sure that all of them, all of the interventions in that answer choice fit the question. So let's go up to the top. We have Garrett presents with a 10-year history of intermittent and achy left-sided jaw pain. I want to stop there for a second because, you know, we really need to make sense of what I'm seeing. I think this is important. So we have a 10-year history. So it's been going on for a while. We don't know how it started. It doesn't say anything like that. But it's a 10-year history of intermittent come and go achy left-sided jaw pain and so when you're thinking about that what's kind of like sticking out at you you know any type of pathologies any type of soft tissue bony structure anything kind of you know sticking out at you right now because when i see 10 year history of intermittent achy pain i'm thinking well potentially muscle could potentially be the joint itself all right. One of the things that kind of sticks out at me is potentially like the actual joint itself, more like an osteoarthritis or something like that, could have achy pain that has this 10 year history. All right. So keeping in mind that there are a few different things that this could be, but definitely could be a muscle, definitely could be, you know, the joint. I don't see anything related to nerves or anything like that. So I'm not thinking neural. All right, let's continue down the question. It says the patient's pain is provoked when biting down on the right, but relieved when chewing on the left. Okay, so that's important. Let's dissect that. The patient's pain is provoked when biting down on the right, but relieved when, che when chewing on the left. What does that mean to you? And don't get confused because a lot of people will read this type of question or read this statement and be like, oh, wait, so they got pain on the right side? No, no, no. That's not what this question's saying. They're saying that the patient's pain, the left-sided jaw pain, is provoked when they bite down on the right, but relieved when they're pretty much biting down on the left. Is that sticking out at you? Does that mean anything to you right now? Because it should. There's actually a special test that is very similar to what I'm talking to you about right now, where you have the patient bite down on one side and you see if you can reproduce the patient's pain. It's called the bite down test. Sometimes it's called the cotton roll test as well. Are you familiar with that one? You got to put that down in your notes. That's something that we need to be very clear on. All right, now go in and I'll explain that to you more in a moment, but let's look at the last sentence of the question. It says, which of the following should be the primary focus of treatment? So I'll read through the answer choices again, and then we'll dissect each one of these answer choices. So A says modalities, soft tissue mobilization and motor control training. B says joint mobilization, postural re-education, motor control training. C says trigger point release, joint oscillations, and masseter stretching. And D says soft tissue mobilization, use of a night guard, and masseter stretching. All right. So before we go in and start really dissecting these answer choices, can I go back to the whole bite down test I was talking about? Okay. So let's get on the same page with this. The bite down test, the purpose of it is to really determine the origin of the patient's jaw pain. And when I say origin, I'm talking about whether it's a muscular origin, like muscle pain, or is it more related to joint pain? 
That's the purpose of the bite down test. Now you need to know what the performance of this test looks like. How do I do it? Well, what you would do is you have the patient take a cotton roll or a tongue depressor, and they're going to put it towards the backside of one side of their mouth. Like, let's just say on the right side, okay? So you put the tongue depressor, it's on the right side, and you're going to have the patient clench or bite down on the right. And we're looking to see, does that reproduce the patient's pain? All right? That's, that's the bite down test. Now, here's what you need to know about that test, though. If the patient has that tongue depressor, puts it into the right side and bites down on it, and then the patient gets pain on the left, what, what's kind of going on there? What is that telling me? Well, it's telling me that there is a joint problem on the left. You heard me right. If you bite down on the right side and you get pain on the left, that means that you have some type of joint problem on the left side. Mm-hmm. OK, so you might be like, well, wait, hold on a minute. So if a person bites down on the right and they get pain on the left side, it's a joint problem on the left. Yes. And the reason why is the person is closing down on the left side. The joints get the, the bones get closer together on the left and they gap on the right. So what do I need you to write down in your notes right now? Because you need to, to definitely make sure that you know this, that there's a bite down test. And when you bite down on the right side, it gaps the joint on the right, but closes down on the left. It gaps the joint on the right, but closes down on the left side. All right. So let's look at our question. The question says the patient's pain is provoked when biting down on the right, but relieved when chewing on the left. That's exactly what I'm talking about right here. So you, the person bites down on the right. And then guess what? They get pain on the left. You tell me, what is likely the pathology that's going on? What's likely the structure that is giving the patient pain? It is the joint. It's the joint on the left. And you might say, well, wait, hold on a minute, Kyle. Coach K, like why does the patient get a pain relief when biting down on the left? Well, let's think about it. If we put that tongue depressor, with the bite down test, we put the tongue depressor in on the left side and the patient bites down on the left and the pain gets better. What's really happening? We're gapping the left side. We're taking the two bones and bringing them away from each other. We're gapping the joint, which makes it feel better. It's confirming that the patient has a joint problem on the left side. Now, you may have to take a step back and actually look at this visually and go into the text and actually read about it and see it visually. But I'm telling you right now, the principle that you need to remember is that if I bite down on the right and I get pain on the left, on the opposite side, then it is a joint problem on the opposite side. So bottom line, what do we know right now going into our answers that I'm dealing with a patient who has a joint problem on the left, something along the lines of an osteoarthritis, maybe just inflammation in the joint, but it is some type of joint related problem. And now I need to pick the best intervention set that is going to attack the osteoarthritis or inflammation of the joint, whatnot. Does that make sense there? All right, if you, if you need a little extra, go ahead and put that down in the comment box. I'll be more than happy to kind of teach that a different way. But let's look at the answer choices. It says A, modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and motor control training. Okay, so I like the modalities, right? We can use modalities for, for like an osteoarthritis or inflammation in the joint. We could use that. I mean, there's different things we could use. Things like uh, ice or ultrasound. Okay, so I know that we could use modalities. But the one thing, if I'm really dealing with, let's say, an osteoarthritis, because this is a 10-year history. So this probably, this isn't just some acute thing that just showed up. This has been here for a while. And so are modalities that effective for osteoarthritis? I mean, maybe it'll be a temporary fix, but long, I mean, to really have significant impact, modalities is not going to be my number one thing that I want to do with that patient. It's just not going to have lasting impact. So I don't like modalities. The next 
a part of that answer says soft tissue mobilization. It's like, could you do soft tissue mob, get in there, you know, kind of either stretch out the tissue or do some deep tissue massage in that area. You could do something like that. But listen, this is a joint related problem. Going after the musculature is not going to help us here. And so I don't like soft tissue mobilization. And then the last part of that answer says motor control training. And I like that. I mean, you can, you know, train the muscles to make sure that they're opening and closing the mouth correctly so we're not tearing up the joint. I like that. But the rest of the answer, the modalities and the soft tissue mob, I'm like, I don't think that's a good answer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a big X next to A. I just don't like it. I don't think it's the most effective. Let's look at B. B says joint mobilization, postural re-education, and motor control training. Let's take a look. Do I want to do joint mobilization here? I know some of you all had said, well, it didn't say anything about range of motion. So can we infer that there possibly is a range of motion problem though? Can we infer that the joint probably is not moving very well? I mean, look at someone who has osteoarthritis. Do those patients tend to be hypermobile or do they tend to be hypomobile? You think about the clinic now, go back to your orthopedic clinical and you had your patients coming in with, 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 you know, uh, osteoarthritis, whether it be the lumbar spine or any part of the body, were they more hypermobile or hypomobile? Hypomobile, right? And so I like the idea of joint mobilization because likely this patient is hypomobile. So I'll keep it in for now. It's a decent answer. Um, postural reeducation. Is that something I would want to do with a patient who has osteoarthritis of the TMJ? Yeah, I would. Why? Because I know if the patient has forward head posture, that that's putting a lot of stress on the joint. It actually does. It puts a lot of stress on the TMJs. And so postural re-ed is very important. So I like that. And then motor control training. Of course, I want to train those muscles to make sure that they're opening and closing the jaw correctly. We're not out of alignment. And we're not putting a lot of undue stress on the joint. I love it. I think B is the best answer we have for now. Doesn't mean it's correct, but it's the best answer. Let's look at C. C says trigger point release. And already I don't like C. Because trigger point release, I would really need to have some type of muscle thing going on. All right, and we've already, because of this whole bite down special test that we were talking about before, I know that I'm dealing with more of a joint problem, not soft tissue related problem. So I don't like the trigger point release. I don't think it's going to be very helpful for this patient. If we look at the second part of this answer, it says joint oscillations. Of course, I can go in there, do some joint oscillations. Y'all tell me what those are for. If you're on the treadmill, in the car, in the gym right now, if you're listening to me live, what are joint oscillations used for? Pain reduction. I love it. Now, should I do this with a patient who comes to me in pain? Should I do this with a patient who has pain, TMJ-related pain? I mean, yeah, you could do it. Now, my question to you is, are you going to have long lasting impact on the patient's pain if you just do some grade one, grade two, little joint oscillations? The answer to that is no. It's a decent part of the answer. I like it, but is it going to be the most effective? And I would say, ah, long term, probably not. And then the last part of that answer says masseter stretching. And again, it's like, why? Why are we stretching the soft tissue? Why are we going after the soft tissue here? I don't even know if the masseter needs stretching. All right. I don't even know. I don't even know if that muscle truly is tight. I don't know enough from the question to say that. And so I'm going to go ahead and put an X next to C. Let's look at our uh, last answer. It says soft tissue mobilization. Again, we go back to that. I, I don't see why we would want to do soft tissue mob, or I don't see why it is not. It, it, it's like a primary focus of treatment. I don't like that. Um, use of a night guard. You know, if a patient is doing a lot of uh, what they call like bruxism, like grinding of the teeth at night, you know, a night guard would be a great choice. Does it say in the question anything about bruxism, grinding of the teeth at night, anything like that? It really doesn't. Right. And so I don't think that that needs to be a primary focus of treatment. Do you all see where I'm kind of going with that? And then the last part of the answer 
on D says masseter stretching. And again, I don't see why that needs to be a primary focus of treatment if in the question it didn't say anything about that. Okay. So I think that it is super important that we go ahead and eliminate D, leaving us with our final answer of B as in boy. Let me read you that answer again. That answer is joint mobilization, postural re-education, and motor control training. That's the best answer here. Congratulations to those of you who got this one correct. Now, I will say when it comes down to the TMJ, it's not easy. Obviously, the bite down test is one of those tests that can be very difficult to retain the information for. And that's the reason why I have a cheat sheet ready to go for you. If you're on the podcast right now, listen, you can go in there to the show notes, click the link in there and get your cheat sheet. I have the bite down test broken down, the algorithm to show you exactly how to use it in the clinic. But I'm telling you right now that there's a principle that you have to remember that if a patient comes to you and you have them bite down on the right and they get pain on the left that I can tell you that it's likely that the patient has joint problems on the left side. You may be asking, oh, well, Coach K, let me ask you this. Let's say your patient came into you with right-sided jaw pain. You had them do the bite down test. They bite down on the right and they got pain on the right. What's likely the problem there? Is that still the joint? No. That's more of a muscle now related origin. All right. So if they got pain and they're coming into you, they're saying, ah, oh, my right side of my jaw is really painful. And you have them bite down on the right and it's painful on the right. That's more of a what we call myogenic pain or muscle type pain. There you go. That's how we tell the difference. And you need to be ready to do that on the MPTE when it shows up. Does this make sense? Is that clear? I mean, if you want that solidification of this concept and be able to retain it, I need you to click the link in the show notes. Get this freaking cheat sheet. It'll help you to solidify this idea.